In this video lecture, we're going to try and compare the first ionization energies of uh, elements across a period. So within a period, we're going to try and uh, compare the first ionization energy, which is that we're going to try and remove one electron from each element in one period. So I've, I've uh, this is period number two, which I've written down, and I've written down all the elements, and I've uh, written down the group numbers, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine and neon. That's group zero. So I've written down all the groups and I've written down all the elements and I've drawn a few elements. I've drawn uh, I've drawn lithium. So I'm going to try and remove this particular electron from lithium and uh, I've written down carbon. I'm going to try and remove this electron from carbon, the outermost, the first electron. We're talking about the first ionization energy over here. And I've drawn fluorine, so I'm going to try and remove this particular electron from fluorine. Now, uh, there are five factors that would uh, that we discussed earlier that affect the ionization energies. Now, if you move across the period, what you'll notice is that lithium has three protons, so it had only three. It has only three protons, and as you move across the period, beryllium has four protons. Boron has five protons, then six protons, and seven. So the proton number or the nuclear charge, it continuously increases. So one thing that you'll notice across the period is the first thing that we'll notice across a period. So our first factor is that nuclear charge. Or we can say the number of protons in the nucleus which are positively charged. So the number of protons increase. And if they increase, it's going to become harder to remove an electron. Now fluorine has nine protons, which means that nine protons of fluorine are going to attract those electrons. Uh, and it would have a lot stronger force of attraction for those electrons. Whereas lithium had only three protons. So as you move across the period, the proton numbers are increasing. So it's, it's going to become more and more difficult to remove an electron. So ionization energies would increase. So that would suggest, uh, based on this factor alone, that would suggest that ionization energies, or the first ionization energy, increases across the period. But that's one factor that we're talking about. Let's talk about the, about the other factors. The other factors are that uh, as you move across the period, the number of shells remain exactly the same. For example, lithium has two shells. And if I look at carbon, carbon also has exactly two shells. And if you look at fluorine, fluorine also has exactly two shells. So a second factor, uh, which is shielding, that remains constant throughout, uh, that the number of shells that are, that are coming in between the nucleus and the outermost electron, they're exactly the same. All of the elements in a, in a single period, they're going to have exactly the same number of shells. So shielding remains constant. So shielding remains constant. Now I'm going to discuss the third factor, which is uh, the distance of the distance of the outer electron from the nucleus. Now, if you look at all of these three atoms, the samples that I've drawn, I've drawn fluorine, carbon, and lithium. Uh, the the distance of the outer electron is almost the same, so there's no noticeable or very slight difference between the outer electron and the nucleus. The, the distance remains almost the same. But what happens, in fact, is that uh, because fluorine has more protons, as you move across the period, there are more protons, there's a stronger force of attraction, so the atoms become slightly smaller. So as you move across the across the period, um, due to higher nuclear charge, there's more force of attraction, and the electrons get slightly more attracted or pulled towards the nucleus. So distance slightly decreases, slightly decreases across the period 
due to the stronger force of attraction from the nucleus and that would basically suggest that if the electron is closer to the nucleus the outermost electron we're talking about if that is closer to the nucleus that would suggest that ionization energy would increase so there are two factors right now we, that we have with us one is nuclear charge which is increasing across the period and the other one is that distance slightly decreases because of the higher nuclear charge because of the of the higher force of attraction um, the distance decreases so it's closer to the nucleus the electrons are closer to the nucleus which would mean that it would be more difficult to pull electrons out from elements which are on the right of the periodic table so as you move across the uh, across towards the right of the of a period uh, two factors are suggesting that ionization energy should increase uh, shielding remain co remains constant uh, the fourth factor which was positive charge on iron that remains uh, invariant because all of the atoms we're talking about the first ionization energy so all of the atoms are neutral atoms so that is not an issue uh, and the fourth point is orbital orbital arrangement now the fourth point is a very important point that I'm going to uh, bring in later on so this point would be discussed later uh, but right now I'm going to based on these two factors alone this one uh, nuclear charge and distance the factor of distance and the nuclear charge I'm going to plot the first ionization energy I'm and I'm going to show a general trend of what happens to ionization energies across the period now I've plotted the uh, first ionization energies of across uh, a period and previously that we discussed that the first ionization energies across a period are going to increase and they're going to increase because the proton numbers are increasing as you move ac across the period from lithium to neon that we've dis discussed just recently so uh, the proton numbers are increasing the shielding remains constant whereas the distance slightly decreases so because of these three factors uh, it becomes more and more difficult to remove an electron so the energy required increases so the ionization energies keep on increasing but there's one difference there's a dip uh, in ionization energies at boron and there's a dip at ionization energy uh, when you reach oxygen uh, so there's a dip at group 3 and there's a dip at group 6 now I'm going to try and explain why there's a dip in ionization energy when you move from uh, group 2 to group 3 and this is a question that is frequently asked so so the first point that I'm going to discuss is uh, we left it to orbital arrangement and this is has to do with orbital arrangement so I'm going to discuss the first um, dip so why is there a dip or decrease in the first ionization energy in group 3 or in our case why is there a dip at boron um, this has to do with the orbital arrangement so if I look at the orbital arrangement of uh, let's say compare uh, I write down the orbital arrangement for boron which has five electrons so if I write down the, electro uh, the electronic arrangement for boron it's going to be 1s2 and 2s2 and then the last electron is in 2px and it has one electron and compare that and I'm going to compare that with the uh, with BE over here so I'm going to compare boron and beryllium's uh, orbital arrangement and see why boron's orbital arrangement decreases. So let's look at BE. It has a total of four protons and four electrons. So the electronic configuration is 1s2n. Then you have 2s2. Now if you look carefully, uh, we're going to try and remove an electron. When you talk about the first ionization energy of boron, we're basically removing an electron from 2px orbital. And if I uh, remove an electron from beryllium, the first ionization energy, I'm remo removing the electron from 2s2. Now, these two orbitals are different. They both belong to the second shell. The, the number of protons, etc., the distance, uh, uh, the shielding effect is almost the same, except for one fact that an electron is removed from the 2px orbital in boron. So it's going to be easier to remove uh, an electron from the 2px orbital and the reason is that the 2px orbital is a higher energy orbital so what you're going to write is because it's a higher energy orbital it won't require a lot of energy the 2s orbital comparatively is a lower energy orbital so that would require the electron needs more energy uh, so it can um, uh, it, it can separate itself from the nucleus so this electron in the 2s orbital because it's at a lower energy 
will require more energy whereas the 2 2x orbital um, is at a higher energy so it would require lesser energy because it already is at a higher energy and the second factor is that this 2px orbital has more shielding because um this 2px orbital would be shielded by two orbitals whereas this 2s orbital would only be shielded by one orbital so what you're going to write and what you're going to say is that uh, that ionization energy or the first ionization energy of boron is lesser because an electron is being removed an electron is removed from a higher energy 2px orbital a higher energy 2px orbital which also has higher shielding yeah which is shielded by the inner to s orbital so it's easier to remove an electron from boron because uh, you're removing it from a higher energy orbital it the electron would require lesser energy and also it has more shielding compared to beryllium um, beryllium the electron is removed from a 2s orbital which is going to be slightly closer to the nucleus and would would have lower energy compared to this 2px orbital so this is the point uh, that i'm uh, that we missed when we were talking previously discussing previously we did not discuss orbital arrangement so the only time you're going to discuss orbital arrangement is when you have to explain the dip at group number 3 next i'm going to explain the uh, why there's a dip at uh, group number 6 or at oxygen now i'm going to explain why there's a dip at in first ionization energy at group 6 or oxygen over here and i'm going to discuss mm. this dip why there's a decrease a sudden decrease in ionization energy as you move from nitrogen to oxygen so let's uh, write down the electronic configuration of oxygen oxygen has eight electrons so the electronic configuration is 1s2 it's 2s2 then you have 2px and 2py and 2p z and there would be two electrons in the first orbital and one each in the next two orbitals similarly so i'm going to compare that with nitrogen because nitrogen is right next to it nitrogen has a slightly higher ionization energies it's not following the trend so uh, nitrogen has seven electrons so it's 1s2 2s2 and then you have 2px 2py and 2p z and there would be one electron each now if you look carefully both electronic arrangements are almost almost identical but when you're removing the electron from nitrogen you're removing the electron from a 2pz orbital or any of the because 2px 2py and 2pz are identical orbitals there's no difference it's only the orientation it's x y and z axis and remember x y and z axis these are uh, arbitrary orientation it's it's uh, you it's the person who's observing that determines which one is x which one is y and which one is z otherwise there's no there's no particular difference between these three orbitals but when you try to remove an electron from oxygen you're going to try and remove the electron from this orb orbital because this uh, 2px orbital is a full orbital there's more repulsion so the easiest uh, electron that you uh, you can remove is from the 2px orbital now that is the reason why oxygen is going to have a lower ionization energy or it's going to be easier to remove an electron because if you look at this orbital it's a fully paired orbital which means that the electrons would be repelling each other so you don't need to give it a lot of energy the electrons are already repelling each other they would be repelling each other and the electrons would need very little energy to jump out of that orbital but if you look at nitrogen there's only a single e electron so there's no there's no particular repulsion in that particular orbital so there's no electron repelling this electron so it would be easier to remove this electron it would be more difficult sorry to remove this electron so what we would state is that it is easier 
or the first ionization energy of oxygen or any group 6 when we're talking about ionization energies across the period we can apply to any period so any uh, any group 6 element in a period so ionization energy of oxygen would be lesser would be lesser due to spin pair repulsion due to spin pair repulsion as electron is being removed from a full orbital as electron is being removed removed from a fully paired orbital so I'm going to repeat this once more because the, the orbital is full there's a lot of repulsion so it's easier to remove an electron from oxygen which is why there's going to be a dip at oxygen and the ionization energy of oxygen would be a lot lesser compared to nitrogen and it's not going to follow the trend so so that explains why there's a dip at group 3 and why there's a dip at group 6 so the, these two points are very important they are very frequently asked in your past paper so remember these points and remember them to, uh, remember to use the correct wording when you answer this question spin pair repulsion would be the term that would be used to uh, describe uh, the electron electron repulsion in a fully paired orbital